Hey, it's Chris here. So as you've probably heard, Apple announced that Siri is getting a huge upgrade in iOS 18. Siri now has the ability to comb through all of your data, your contacts, your messages, your emails, your calendar, your notes, and even app specific data across all of your apps. So this gives Siri a personal context and it can perform tasks such as if you just ask it vaguely, hey, order an Uber for my date tonight, right? And Siri can intelligently pull from all those pieces of data and perform that task. Now, the downside of that obviously is you have to give up your data to Siri for it to know. And the interesting thing is that I asked, I just created a poll. I think this was, yeah, yesterday. And 60% of respondents said they would not want to give Siri all of that data. Keep in mind that the people who watch my channel and you, right? We are all tech oriented people. We know what can be done with data. We know that the big companies are taking data and they're doing things with it that we wouldn't necessarily want, right? The masses, they only see the front end UI, right? And they're like, oh, I can do this or that, but they don't really know the hidden agenda of the big tech companies. So I feel like us having that knowledge we're definitely more guarded with our data and personal information. Whereas the general public, you know, the general iPhone user, they are less in tune or aware of how their data is being used. They only see the benefit. So I think that this poll probably doesn't apply to how the general population is going to perceive Siri uh, capturing all of their data and using it as AI. So my first takeaway is that there's going to be way more people using AI in their day-to-day -day lives now. Now, I don't know about you, but most of my friends and family, they're not tech people. And so they are not going to use AI to plan a trip. They're not going to ask AI how to write this email. They, they just won't because they have to go on a different website, for example, ChatGPT, and they have to potentially upload information for the AI to work with and give it context and all of that stuff still very reserved for tech oriented people or tech savvy people. But now if it's just on your device and think about how many people like grandmas and grandpas, uncles, aunts, who are not tech savvy, who use iPads, right? And iPhones because they're easy to use, right? And now they have access to just ask Siri to do something. They're going to do it and they're going to expect things to be that easy from this point on, which brings me to my second takeaway is that people, once they get used to and acclimatized to using AI, asking Siri to do all of these different things across their apps on their device, they're going to come to expect that. That's going to be the standard. That's going to be the expectation. So for us as app developers, if let's say our app is a to-do app and the user on the iPhone is telling Siri, hey, I finished this task, please mark it as complete. And Siri cannot do that because it can't find the data in your app and it doesn't know about your app. The user is not going to like that. And they're going to delete your to-do list app and they're going to look for another one that does expose the data to the on-device AI, to Siri, right? So to me, I think we need to really start diving deeper and paying more attention to Siri Kit and app intents because that is how you're going to expose your apps data and capabilities to Siri to be used with various AI tasks. Let's move on to the second big takeaway from the event, which is on the Xcode part, there's going to be Xcode code completion and Swift assist. So code completion is AI where it has the context of your project and it can predict what you want to do. And you can, it'll give you lines of code that thinks you want to write. And then you just tab through it and select like code completion, but maybe taken a little further. Swift Assist, if you didn't see the video, is more of like a copilot or a code assistant where you can just ask it questions if you don't know how to do something, or perhaps you uh, wanted to change your code somehow, refactor it, you can just ask it to do that. Now, Co Swift Assist isn't available just yet, but the code completion stuff is. If you download Xcode 16, I believe you need the new version of Mac OS as well, Sequoia. So. I haven't downloaded this just yet, but 
I do want to refer to a video here by Pitt and you can go check out his channel. I'll link this, I'll link this video in the description below. So you can check it out. He's showing off some of Xcode 16's code completion. And his conclusion is just that you still need to know what you're doing. It's not very good in general. Um, it could be that it's still in beta or it could get better. But as it stands right now, it, his conclusion is that it's not as magical as the demos made it to be at WWDC. And also, if you read the comments below, people are not too um, amazed by it, let's say. Which goes back to the point that I want to make is that you still need to have a baseline knowledge of coding. You can't expect the AI to just produce the software for you working in everything. And then you have no idea how to maintain it, how it's done. I still stand by the fact that you need to be the architect. You can give the AI bits to write, or if you don't know how to do something, that's actually a good way to use AI is to tell it what you want and then have it uh, generate something. You read it so that you can understand and get a general idea of how it's done, which gives you a direction to go in. Then you can Google research, ask, you have a direction to go because oftentimes if you don't know how to do something, you've never done it before, you don't know where to start, right? So my third takeaway is that there's going to be less of an emphasis on the coding part because you can use the AI to assist you and to guide you. And there's going to be more emphasis on the product development part. So that's like the business side of things, the marketing, the user feedback, user testing, all of that stuff. And I think this presents a few unique opportunities for everyone. So first of all, if you're a hardcore engineer, it's going to make it even easier for you to stand out with your skills and knowledge and expertise, because there's going to be a, a flood of coders trying to build things that don't really know what's going on. So it's going to be really easy for you to stand out. Second of all, because there's going to be a new flood of people using AI coding, the competition is going to be stepped up so that you have to focus more on the marketing side and standing out from the crowd rather than trying to learn code syntax, for example. And one last thing is that coding and building apps being more accessible with AI inside Xcode. That means that if you ever wanted to learn how to code or to build an app, now is the time. Now is the best time for you to learn and to build your product because the limit to your success isn't, isn't coding anymore. The barrier is now expressing your creativity and then getting your vision out there and getting enough people to buy into your vision of your app. So I think that's really exciting. Anybody who has a great idea can now have even a better thought at getting it actually into the hands of people to be used. So those are my thoughts. Now I want to hear what you think about Siri having access to all of your data, about AI inside Xcode helping people code. What are your thoughts about where coders will be five years from now, let's say? I still maintain the perspective that coders won't be obsolete. The game will just have changed a little bit. The role will have changed a little bit. And what we do day to day will change. Uh, let me know what you think. Share your thoughts below in the comment section and let's have a discussion. Thanks for watching.